Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for our Plastic Pollution Assembly. Welcome. I'm just going to get my slides up for you. Fantastic. So welcome everybody. My name is Nicola um, and I'll be taking you through our plastic pollution assembly today. So hopefully you can all see and hear me OK and hopefully you can also see the slides OK. So at the moment you should see a slide that says what did we learn this week? So we're going to have a little look and think about what we learned in our lesson earlier in this week. We've got a few questions for you as we go and you can either shout these out in class or talk to your teacher about them or if you want to share your answers on the chat you are very welcome to do so as well. So the first thing we thought about when we were thinking about plastics is where do plastics come from? So do you remember what is the link between fossil fuels so things like oil and gas and plastic? How are they linked? Everybody remember? Good morning to everybody who's still joining. Oh, great. We've got some answers coming in on the chat as well, and hopefully you're all shouting out in class. So you're absolutely right. Plastics are made from fossil fuels. So that's one of the biggest links. Most plastics, pretty much all the plastic that you'll see around is made from fossil fuels, so particularly from oil and gas. But there's another link as well in that to make plastics, we also have to put in energy so we don't just get oil out of the ground and it magically turns into plastic. We have to put energy in to make that oil turn into plastic. And where do we get our energy? Usually from burning more fossil fuels. And that's a really important one to remember, because if we're thinking about things to replace plastics, we also need to think about where we're getting the energy to make those other things. But brilliant. Well done for remembering that. So plastics come from fossil fuels. And we learned that, unfortunately, we've got a big problem with plastic pollution. There's a lot of plastic being made um, and it's starting to harm our environment because we're getting so much of it. So does anybody remember how long has plastic been around? So modern plastic, the plastic that's starting to really cause a problem with our environment. Around about how long has that plastic been around? Anybody remember? Oh, we've got some very specific answers coming in. Excellent. Really good. Oh, really good. Excellent. Fantastic. Oh, you've all been paying lots of attention, which is brilliant to see. So yeah, about 1933 was when the first kind of real modern plastics were invented, which is only around 100 years, isn't it? So it's not that long that we've had we've had this new material and yet we've still got so much of it already in our environments. So we're making a lot of it. Brilliant remembering. So now I want you to have a wee think back. So if it's only well, maybe 100 years, but why, if, and we think there's so much of a problem with plastics, why did we bother making them in the first place? Do you remember what were some of the reasons why we thought that plastics might be a good idea? What were we trying to replace? What were we trying to make? Why, why was it that we actually wanted plastics? Remember to talk about it in your classes or share it if you want to on your chat. Oh, good. We're getting some good ideas. Brilliant. So we're getting some replacement. Excellent. Really good. So a lot of people saying we want to replace glass. So absolutely. So we're really trying to replace things that we were struggling with. So things that, yeah, so we wanted to make it cheaper and we want to replace glass. Can you remember anything else that we were trying to replace as well? So we wanted to replace things like glass. Anything else that we might be getting from animals? Does anybody remember anything we might be getting from animals that we wanted to, that we were running out of? Really good, everybody. Oh yeah, we wanted to use them for pipes. Really good. Does anybody remember? You might not remember. There's lots of things to remember from last week, wasn't from Monday, wasn't there? Really good answers though. So if I showed you this beautiful animal. Anybody remember what we were trying to replace with this beautiful elephant? Tusks, great. 
Ah, well done. Someone got it. Piano keys, animal tusks and tortoise shells. Really well done. So we did definitely exactly say we wanted to replace things like glass because that was heavy and we wanted something that was cheaper to make. But we also wanted to replace things like ivory and tortoise shell. So ivory that comes from those beautiful elephant tusks and the shell of the tortoise that are being used to make things like piano keys and glasses and jewellery and lots of things like that. Um, and we were actually running out of these things because we were killing a lot of these beautiful animals in order to make these things. So plastic seems like a great idea in that sense, doesn't it? Because we don't have we can make something that looks like ivory or looks like tortoise shell, but we don't have to kill any of these beautiful animals to get it. So what we talked about was there were actually some quite good things about plastic. Like you already said, it's less, it's not as heavy as things like glass. It can be cheaper. It can be really good for things like medical care. So if you have, if anybody's had a vaccine or if you've had to have anything in the doctors, often that's made of plastic, but that's a good thing because we can, we can replace them lots and we do, don't spread diseases. So there's some really good things about plastic. But we also thought there were some bad things. And can we remember what one of the really bad thing is that one of the reasons that we thought it was good, but actually turns out to be pretty bad and pretty harmful for the environment. What's one of the bad things that we have about plastic? What's one of the problems? Why is plastic such a big problem in the environment? Oh, well done. Awesome. Amazing numbers that you guys are remembering. That's amazing. Fantastic. Well done. So, yeah, it, exactly. It takes a very, very long time to break down it, it, and it ends up polluting places. It takes too long. So it takes a really, really long time. Really well done. And yeah, access, oh well, it gets everywhere. So it gets left everywhere and it doesn't break down. It lasts a long time, which is great if you want to make it into something that's you know, going to be put into someone's body or if you want to make it into a pipe for someone's house. That's, re that's a good thing that we want it to last a while, but that unfortunately means that we've got a lot of it left over. Exactly, as we say, as Ms. Hal says, we, it goes into landfill. So it spends a long time breaking down and just ends up in the environment and it breaks down in small pieces. And we've said that, and as you say, we've got some problems with wildlife, haven't we? So plastic is really harming a lot of our amazing wildlife. So we had Kirsty came and told us all about these beautiful turtles called leatherback turtles. And she showed us that amazing, huge blow up turtle that was huge. And it's amazing that we can see those off the coast of Scotland sometimes. So what's the problem? What's the problem with turtles and plastic in particular? Why are turtles having such a hard time with plastic? You remember what oh well done oh you guys were being really paying attention weren't you absolutely so the plastic bags look like tasty turtle foods so they just look like jellyfish floating around and turtles love to eat jellyfish i'm not sure i'd be very keen but turtles love jellyfish and that looks just like a beautiful jellyfish doesn't it that plastic bag floating there and so the turtles eat them and then they get stuck in their stump tummies and then they don't really want to eat anything because they think that they've already had some food and then they get really sick. And when if anybody came to our early years and P1 to P3 session on Tuesday, we also talked about this because we read the amazing book by Sarah Roberts, Somebody Swallowed Stanley. And in that book, Sarah told us about a turtle that ate a plastic bag called Stanley and got very sick, just like you guys all remembered. But in the, ni the nice thing about that story was help was at hand. So someone came and someone helped Stanley and took the plastic bag out of his mouth so he could breathe and he could eat again. So we learned that we can do really good things if we work together to try and help. So we are seeing lots of good change. This is one thing that we learned. So world leaders are trying to come together to do something about this and it's hard work and we need to keep pushing them. Um, but there is some change happening. 
we learned from Isabel that we're starting to under un, uncover amazing animals that could help us. So we learned about the wax moth caterpillar, who's we learned can actually eat up plastic and chew it up, um, but not let out little tiny bits of plastic into the environment. So they might be able to help us with some of the plastic we've already made. And we learned that this year a new law came into Scotland to ban single a lot of single use plastics. And we do remember, though, that we have to be careful when we think about these laws that we take everybody into account. So there are a couple of exemptions in this law, particularly for things like straws, that some people do need plastic straws to live independently because we haven't got alternatives that will work well enough for them. So we do have to make sure we take everybody into account when we make these laws. But this law is brilliant because it really should reduce a lot of this single use plastic, which is some of the worst types of plastic because it gets used once and then it's in the bin. And we learned a lot of it doesn't get recycled. So it's really the worst type of plastic entirely. So now I've got them one of the most important questions. What can you do to help? So you might have been doing some things already because I've seen, we're going to have a look at your work in a little bit. And I've seen some incredible things that you are all doing this week. So think about some of the things you've already done and other things that you could do that we talked about on Monday. What can you do to help? Brilliant, some answers coming in. Going on litter picks. Yeah, absolutely. So all that plastic, remember what Emma said. Emma said that 80%, so that's four out of every five bits of, plas of, plas of plastic that's found in our oceans has come there from the land. And that's because it gets blown and moved around into our streams and our rivers and then gets washed out to sea. So if we can pick up that plastic before it gets there, we can stop a lot of that plastic getting into those oceans and harming those turtles. So that's really good to go and pick up litter. That's fantastic. We've got so many answers. Making sure we use the bins. Brilliant. So doing lots of things to try and get that litter away. And we've got some great ideas as well. We can recycle our plastic so that it doesn't end up in landfills and it doesn't end up being litter. And I've got some great ideas as well. So using things, so using things that can be reused. Brilliant. So things like metal straws water bottles fantastic using alternatives and i've also got some amazing ones using less plastic which is really good so remember our, our little phrase reduce reuse recycle and remember what isabel said isabel said that that we we do want to recycle so we don't want to necessarily stop recycling but recycling is the last resort so the first thing that we want to do is reduce so exactly like some of you were saying, use less plastic and just use less stuff. Because like I said, even though we get we want to get rid of the plastic, but also anything that we use needs energy to make it. And often that's coming from those fossil fuels that we don't want to keep burning. So just using less stuff. So every time you think you need something, ask, do I really need that? Absolutely. Oh, we've got some even better ones coming in. Rethink, refuse and repair so we can add even more R's to this before we get to recycling. But if the first thing we remember is to reduce, to ask, do we really need it and can we use less of it? Then. If we if we can't, if we do need a thing, because we do need some things, then can we reuse something before we buy a new thing? Can we buy something if we need to buy something new? Can we buy something that can be reused or can we reuse something that's already there? So we can get things like this that can be reused. So I've got my reusable water bottle. I've also got a reusable coffee mug. And I've got my reusable shopping bag. So we can use all these, have all these things that we can keep reusing and reusing lots and lots of times. And if they get broken, we can repair them. Just like we said, Ms. Tamil said, we, said we can repair them as well. So rather than just throwing them away and getting a new one. So if we can get into the, the habit of doing things like that, that will make a massive difference. And I also saw a few of you came up with some other, another um, kind of thing talking about campaigning and things. And this is one of the ones that Isabel said that I thought was one of the best ones to do. Be annoying. So we want to be actually be as annoying as possible. And by that, we mean ask as many questions as you can and challenge when you think things aren't right. So say, speak up, use your voice. And we're going to see some amazing examples of that in that amazing work that you've been doing in just a couple of minutes. Um, it's so incredible how much you guys are already using your voices to ask for change. But keep being annoying. Keep asking those questions. If you don't understand, always ask. 
and always never be afraid to say that you're not happy about how something's being done. So think about what you could do in your school, in your community, in your home to try and use less plastic and keep being annoying. So there's some amazing things that you can do. And like I say, we're going to have a look at the brilliant things that you've done. But just before that, we've got a few questions because you had some brilliant questions during the sessions and you sent some into us afterwards. And we wanted to make sure we answered all of those. So we did get quite a few questions about the amazing leatherback turtles and turtles in general, because people were really interested in them, which I'm not surprised because they are amazing. So the first question that we got asked was how long do turtles live for? And I think Kirsty did answer this in the chat, but just so you remember, you know, depends on the type of turtle, the species of the turtle, but they can live up to 70 to 80 years, which is almost as long as humans can live. So they're really long lived animals. Someone asked the brilliant question, can turtles see colours? Kirsty told us that yes, they can. So they can see colours. The, the world will look very different to a turtle because the world looks different to all animals, see the world in a slightly different way. But turtles can see colours. And then we had a couple of questions about how turtles move around. So why do turtles live in warm areas when they're first born? And the answer to that is that so that their eggs can hatch and their young can be safe. So often uh, turtles need nice warm temperatures for their eggs to hatch properly. And it's also a safer place. The warm areas that they lay their eggs in are safer places for their young to grow up in. It's a bit easier because it's a bit warmer and it's a bit safer. So it's a good place to lay your eggs. So if it's such a nice place to be, if it's warm, then why do turtles then travel to cold places when they're older? You think they just stay in a nice warm place. So the reason that they then leave and travel to cold places is that they're looking for tasty food. So a lot of the tasty food that the, the turtles love, especially those jellyfish, they like to often like to come across places like Scotland in the summer. So this is a good place for them to be. So the turtles come looking for their food. So you often find this, the, the good food is found in colder waters. So they come across here to get their food and then they go back again to lay their eggs in the warmer places so that their young can then grow up. And then we had a few more questions about plastic. So we had, what's the smallest piece of microplastic that's ever been found? And so plastic can actually break down to it's the size of one micrometer. Now that's a really, really small amount and difficult to imagine. So that's why I've got this picture here. So if you see that big gray thing that looks kind of like a big rope or something going across the middle of the screen, that's actually a human hair. So one of your hairs from your head, if you zoom right in on that with a microscope, that's what it look, that's what it looks like. So if you imagine that's the size of a hair, a human hair, and then just in the corner you can see a little red thing, that's a red blood cell. So that's the cells that go around in your bloodstream and carry all the oxygen, all the energy to your to your um, body. So that's tiny little cells inside your body, and that little blue dot sitting next to the red bit, that's is the plastic. So that's how tiny it can get, really, really tiny, um, these bits of plastic when they break down. And that is so small that it can actually, if you eat food that's got that size of plastic in it, it can go across your um, intestines and actually get into your blood, um, which is another thing that we need to unfortunately worry about with plastic. So it's really tiny. Another great question, why should we be in the shower? Isabel had some really great ideas of things that you guys can do. And that is to save water. So that was why Isabel was recommending weaning in the shower. So thinking about things that you can do. Partly it's kind of thinking about how can we do things differently? We're going to need to think about what we can do differently. And Isabel was saying that if we if we wee in the shower, it's clean because um, our urine, our pee doesn't have any nasty germs in it. And as long as the water is flowing, we clean it all and we, and we wash it all away. It means that we're not having a pee in the toilet and flushing the toilet. And that's going to save lots of water if we do that every day. Now, you might want to check with your mums and dads before you start weeing in the shower. Um, but it's start thinking about other ways that maybe that you could save water as well. And the final question was, is there any way that we can use other materials other than plastic? So different materials. So that was something that Isabel talked to you about as well, was about all the different options of things that we could replace um, plastics with. 
And so, yes, there are lots of natural materials that can be used instead. So we can make things from particularly natural materials. So we can think about things like maize, which is like corn. Um, and we can also um, uh, use things like sugarcane and we can use things like seaweed to make types of plastics. But do remember that. So that's quite good because they'll break down better than plastic. They won't last as long, but we still need to put a lot of energy into making them. So remember that reduce, reuse, recycle. Actually, we're better off just trying to not use these things at all if we can avoid it or using things that we can reuse lots and lots of times so less energy goes into them. So that's all of the questions that you sent. Thank you so much for sending the questions. And our next bit, we're going to have a look at some of the work that you've done. So thank you so much for sharing your photos, your letters, stories and amazing work with us. I'm going to start a little bit of music. I'm going to pop my camera off so that you can just focus on the amazing work. And we're going to have a few minutes of looking at the brilliant things that you've been sending in. Thank you so much for sending them in.
Well, thank you all so much. Hopefully you got to see your schools there. If you sent something into us already, so many amazing things. I am amazed by all the incredible things that you are doing. It's really, really wonderful, all the things that we've seen. So please remember what we said on Monday. We can make the difference and we can see that's what you're doing. We can be the difference and we already are already being the difference. So thank you so much for sending those in and thank you so much for taking part. So if you haven't already done so, please try and go out and do a litter pick. Let's try and get as much plastic as possible out of the environment um, and where it belongs in the bin or in the recycling. So we want to try and do that and then keep working on your reducing and your reusing. And let's try and use a lot less plastic as well as clearing it up. So just got a couple thank yous to say as a final bit of the lesson. So thank you to our partners for supporting our live lessons, sharing their knowledge and collaborating with us. So thank you to our amazing um, authors, Isabel Thomas um, and Sarah Roberts, who told us about our amazing books and read them. And thank you to Scottish Book Trust and Scottish Friendly for making it possible for us to have those amazing authors. Thank you to the Marine Conservation Society, particularly Kirsty Crawford for doing that brilliant talk and our own brilliant Glen, Emma Glencross for her talk that she gave you as well. I've well, got two more thank yous. So I want you to say a big thank you to our educators for engaging with us, helping people do their amazing work and being an inspiration for their classes. So in your class, I want you to give a big round of applause, a big clap and a big woohoo for your teachers for um, helping you to do all these amazing things. Thank you so much. And one last thank you. Thank you to all you, all pupils and children, for listening to our lessons, wanting to take action, do something to help our environment, um, and sharing your amazing, fantastic work with us. So big round of applause and woohoo for you guys as well, because that is brilliant. So keep up the amazing work, keep reducing, reusing and recycling, and keep picking up that litter, um, and you'll do an amazing job to help the environment. Um, thank you so much for coming to this assembly today. The recording, like um, Kat said, will be up later on today. And please join us again. We've got a little mini live lesson by our amazing partners, Frog Life, next week um, about, um, about how to install ponds at your school if you're interested in that. And that's open to anybody, no matter what your school playground looks like. And also we've got another big live lesson coming up in December on biodiversity. So on all the incredible animals that we share our planet with. So please come along to those lessons if you can. We'd love to see you. And the recordings will be up as well if you can't come on the day, but would like to see them. So thank you so, so much for coming and hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Bye, thank you so much for coming.